the cost of the technology of accessing a person's genomic information has gone down a billion fold. Now, think about that. There's no technology, there's, no, there's nothing we've ever been exposed to in society, in histor historically even, that's gone down a billion fold in cost. And that leads to access, it leads to, it leads to a revolution, and that's, that revolution's upon us now. It costs billions of dollars to put a man on the moon, and I can tell that within the next five to ten years, you will have minimum 10 million people around the world that will have their genome sequence. In 2000, the Human Genome Project sequenced the first human genome. This took 10 years and roughly $3 billion to complete. Since that time, the speed and cost of this science and technology has rapidly advanced. Today, the possibility of unlocking the innermost details of the human blueprint at a broad scale has become a viable reality. So genomics is, um, has become accessible, an accessible science to, to almost anything that's a life form now. And so what gets me up in the morning is the fact that we can now look at a genome of anything that's living and be able to look at that, the most intimate blueprint of that organism and be able to uh, now really work to decipher that. And if I had listened to my mentors, um, you know, I never would have done what I'm doing because they said it was just impossible. Our genomes and the genomes of the microbes that colonize us help determine many aspects of our lives, from our personalities, our eye color, our weight, our risk of mental and physical diseases, to our response to drugs and more. This knowledge can be applied to improve disease prevention, diagnosis and treatment, as well as to inform our approaches to wellness, nutrition and public health. Most people just kind of st still think of this as science fiction and something that wouldn't be accessible to them, and it actually is. And, and part of the job of Genome BC is to bring this technology into our healthcare system and make it accessible to everybody. Right now, uh, genome sequencing has three primary clinical applications, the earliest stages. One is um, where with newborns that have an undiagnosed disease, we can very quickly get to a diagnosis if they have an inherited disease. Um, these are often rare disease and are hard to diagnose, so genome sequencing lets us do it that very quickly. It's also super effective with cancer. Cancer is a disease of our genome, so instead of just going, oh, Alex has uh, gastric cancer, we should give him this chemotherapy. Instead, we can look at the genetic signature of Alex's particular cancer and target a drug right at that cancer. So that has a huge positive impact. Um, last but not least is what's called non-invasive prenatal testing, where traditionally um, to test for a fetal um, Down syndrome, a needle goes right into the mother's stomach all the way down to the fetus and a sample is taken. With sequencing, we can now just take a simple blood sample from the mother and get the same information from that much less intrusive test. Right now, drugs are prescribed for everybody, one size fits all. In the future, the very near future, we believe, that when you sit down uh, and a drug will be picked based on your genomic background and also the dosage will be picked. So each drug will be ideally suited for your own biology, not sort of one everybody's biology all at once. One of the 10 leading causes of death it's in, in, in all countries that have developed medical systems, developed countries, it's people having, um, having bad reactions to pharmaceuticals. So what would be a common you know, use of this would be if a person is prescribed a medicine, is the medicine is prescribed to the patient, to the right patient at the right dose at the right time to get the right effect. And if you can know that up front by looking at the person's genome, that's very powerful. When I did my genome a year ago, uh, I literally, you know, left the course that kind of taught us how to navigate this with an iPad, and that iPad has my entire genomic sequence on it. It has my entire blueprint on it. And I can look at that, and, you know, if I want to look at my risk for cancer, I can look at all the genes that have been looked at for cancer, and I can just dial them all up and go through them one at a time, and I can look at things related to that. It brings up really complicated questions though. I mean, I have a family history of dementia. My mother passed away of dementia, my, my maternal grandmother also. 
And so, you know, until I think I got to a certain age, you know, probably in my middle 50s, I wasn't really ready to, to know that personally. And, um, and then seeing what my mom went through, I kind of said to myself, you know what, if I knew that, um, I would possibly live my life differently. So why not know? In 2015, a small group of individuals gathered in Vancouver to participate in Canada's first whole genome sequencing workshop hosted by Genome British Columbia. We followed two of the participants as they prepared for their UYG journey. I've spent most of my life in the intersection of business and science. So I have two sons. Uh, they're very, very healthy, athletic individuals. Generally, I would say we're a healthy family, but we do have Alzheimer's disease in my family. For me, it was, it was actually one of the main things that motivated me to take part in this study. If I was to find out that I had that, I would make some big decisions over the next 10 years. I fly from Montreal and, uh, to, to Vancouver, and the reason why I'm here is because I'm convinced that it's a, an exciting moment, not only in my professional life, but also in the life of uh, genomic research in Canada. Tomorrow we will, we will go in the engine room. We will be able to remove our sleeves and go uh, uh, and ask uh, very precise questions, on, not only on the technical part, but also on the impact that it will have on the society, who are the clients, who are the consumers, uh, how will, will we get these uh, geno whole genome sequence done on a more uh, commonly basis. Welcome to the first ever Understand Your Genome in Canada. Today was the first opportunity that the participants had to actually visualize their own genome using the My Genome application and um, really see a different way to look at the variants that we found in their genome and really start to explore their own genome more than they would be able to with just a paper report or a, a data drive full of information. I did, you know, had an opportunity sitting right next to people to, to talk to them and over lunch to talk to people about that. Um, you know, for some, it's, it's quite humbling. It, it's quite humbling because you, you all of a sudden you see a lot of things and you know, one of the people said she, she was quite overwhelmed. I mean, you know, that, wow, like there's a lot going on here. And, uh, and other people that um, kind of thought, you know, maybe they were a bit underwhelmed by it all. And, and I think, which is kind of what happened to me when I did it, but then over the course of the next couple of weeks, my whole view changed, because then I started to really get deeper into it and just realize that, my gosh, it's a treasure trove of data. The good news is I haven't learned of something really scary and genetically altering of what, you know, what my health is. I have several recessive genes that uh, if I was just prior to reproductive age, I might have been quite concerned because then what happens if my partner has that? So the good news is I'm past that point, so I'm not frightened about those results. Um, but it would appear that I have quite a good bill of health, so that's great news. During the, the, the presentation, we exchange uh, verbally and, and, and with uh, Memo. Uh, have you seen that? Did you look at, uh, oh, I have the same mutation as well. Uh, I can spend many hours to dig in the information and I'm sure I will have more questions and, and we will exchange emails among participants here. So how do we harness the power and potential of this technology? What's next in this revolution? Business individuals, entrepreneurs, venture capitalists, they've got great ideas on how we're all gonna partner to move this field forward. So you have those professional awakenings. And then personally, um, people start exploring their genome and have a deeper engagement with their doctor to again, maybe explain some of the symptoms that are having or start discovering uh, new genetic underpinnings of, of conditions or characteristics that they may have. It's a technology that has cost a lot uh, but the, imp the economic impact, the social impact, the, uh, the legal impact uh, will be great and uh, mostly beneficial for the whole population. It's not 
the scientists, it's not the clinicians that are going to lead this. It's going to have to be the society at large. Right now, if you do your whole genome, I mean, so 1% about it is interpretable, and the other 99% is not interpretable. But that other 99%, as more and more and more people do it, that's going to turn to 2% interpretable, 5% interpretable. 10% interpretable, 15%, 20%. And so I'm very enthusiastic about it and getting more and more people involved in it. Genome BC is working with partners locally and internationally to guide the way forward for BC. There are many questions and challenges ahead as we explore how best to embed this technology into our healthcare system. The current priority is to use whole genome sequencing to help diagnose and treat disease. On May 22, 2015, Genome BC helped start a revolution on Canada's west coast. 22 pioneers, 22 genomes deciphered, 22 blueprints to guide the future. <laughs>